Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. This video is going to be a very different video from our usual ones because instead of attacking an application, we'll try to see that how we can mitigate it or you can say how we can fix that particular vulnerability. And since this is the very first, you know, part of the series, we are going to start from cross site scripting because we have already covered a lot of ways through which we can find XSS, you know, bypassing the CSP, bypassing your application firewall and whatnot, right? So in this video, we're going to see and understand from a developer's perspective that how they fix a cross site scripting vulnerability and we'll try to understand that what exactly can go wrong which can sometimes lead to like XSS bypasses right and since we have just reached over 34,000 subscribers this video is a bit more special because I have a surprise for all of you so make sure to watch this video till the end and now without further ado let us get started so now as you can see we are at this particular application and the first way that we're going to discuss which help us to mitigate cross-site scripting vulnerability is to implement secure coding practices, okay? And what I generally mean by this is that you should, as a developer, be never ever trusting user input. And that's what developers should be doing, okay? For example, we know that this particular application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Let me just, to verify this, we can simply go ahead and try to like execute a script, transaction ID, and let's say, you know, a script alert, script tag close, right? Sorry script hit enter and let me just close the script tag please and here we are you can see we've successfully got the alert one which means that this application is actually vulnerable right now if you take a closer look into the payload that we are using or any payload that we're going to use we have some certain characters which are you know definitely going to be used in most of the cases right for example this less than symbol this greater than symbol you know this parenthesis this breaking uh, character and all those things, right? So from a developer perspective, if the user is submitting values that contains these character, they should either remove that completely or they should somehow sanitize it, right? These are the important thing that the developers, you know, should be doing in order to prevent cross-site scripting. So let me just go to the source code because we are also interested in seeing that where this value is actually getting reflected, right? I'm going to copy this and paste it right over here and you can see it is not getting reflected inside any any tags or you know any anything like that right even if let's say it was reflecting over here what the first thing needs to be done is that we need to you know balance the tag by appending a double quote first and then just you know going outside outside of this particular value and then execute the cross-site scripting payload right it's like that so now you can see that all of these characters are getting rendered as it is right so we need to actually fix this and to fix this we are going to see that how we can actually sanitize this particular parameter okay and since this application has been developed in node.js let me just show you that how we can do this node.js with ejs okay i'm going to go to the lab where i have created this particular lab and i know that this is getting reflected here in this comments.ejs file okay i'm going to just show you guys the uh, the whole code first. So this is the code that is rendering the user interface. Okay, if we go all the way up, we'll see something very interesting. Let's go a little down here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, and you can see it is intentionally vulnerable. Okay, and what it is doing is that it is uh, uploading the value or you know using the value which is given by the user and putting it right over here this is you can treat it, it treat it as like a like a placeholder okay if you take a closer look into the source code you'll see that it is getting reflected inside the div class mt2 which is the exact thing over here right it is reflecting over here now what we need to do is we need to you know fix this in such a way that if there's any malicious input it will automatically get escaped or sanitized Okay, and for that in EGS, what we can simply do is we can, let me just show you, just modify some small value and it will work like magic. Okay, let me just show you guys. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Let's go to the comments real quick. Here we are, here we are, here we are. And yeah, here is the vulnerable code, right? Now, instead of percentage and this minus simple, we're simply going to replace the minus with equals to. 
now in EJS this will automatically tell the framework that you need to sanitize all the dangerous and harmful characters okay by just doing this and saving this you see something really interesting happens okay we have just saved this let's go back to our application let's try to let me just remove this completely and just type something else like be practical okay and now let's try to add this this less than and greater than symbol let's go to the source code and let's see how it, it is getting treated okay search for be practical and this time if you take a closer look the less than and greater than symbol has been properly sanitized right it has been properly sanitized now the attacker in this particular application won't be able to execute cross site scripting okay so let me just go and try to execute a script for example a uh, script alert one script that close the same error that we used before and you see it is not working why because now these harmful characters are properly sanitized and they cannot be used to attack the application you can clearly see that all of them has been treated properly and all of them have been sanitized right this is one way of mitigating cross site scripting vulnerability by properly sanitizing the dangerous character now does this means that the application is not vulnerable well not in every case because to be honest there are some cases in which even if the output is getting you know encoded or you know escaped or sanitized we can still execute it based on where the values are getting reflected okay let's try to go ahead and see another example and understand where this can be not very much effective okay so as you can see we are back at this particular application and this time this particular value which we have written over here be practical is getting rendered somewhere else in the html code let's try to go ahead and see where it is getting rendered okay we'll go to view page source we'll type be practical practical and this time you see that it is getting rendered inside a javascript right inside the variable transaction id now let me remind you that this is again protected you know dangerous characters are getting sanitized to verify that we can try to like close the script tag and try to like do this i am just as equals to x on error equals to alert one okay now you see that these values are getting filtered as it is right which means that the sanitization is working properly but even though it is working properly there is still a possibility of us executing a javascript code over here and getting cross site scripting vulnerability how let's try to understand that okay so we have be practical here i'm going to remove this and instead of be practical i'm going to just type numeric value for example this is 7 at 6 why because if you know a little bit of javascript you know that this is expecting a numeric value right this is not inside a double quote okay and then what i'll try to do is i'll try to see if we can use not use the dangerous characters but if we can somehow you know add our own alert one inside this javascript code because it is already inside the script tag right so first thing that i'll do is i'll try to break the line okay and then i'll just go with alert one and then i'll try to comment out rest of the thing so now it becomes something like this let's see you can see this is moved to like this tells the javascript that this is a new line so it need to execute this as a separate line of javascript code and this will tell the javascript that you need to comment out rest of the values after this two slashes which means that this break line is has been commented out now the interesting thing is that if we remove this now like here you see we have successfully gotten the alert one even though they are properly sanitizing the dangerous characters right so what should be doing we should be doing as a developer in this particular scenario over here the first thing which is very important is that you should never ever ever render anything inside a script tag okay inside a script tag even if you are rendering it just try to make sure that you are rendering it or wrapping it around double quotes or single quotes and you are sanitizing the thing properly because if this was inside a double quote then we wouldn't be able to do this kind of attack right because the double quotes will get sanitized and we won't be able to balance balance out the particular payload right these are the things that you need to take care of okay and this is how you are going to fix this particular issue now the thing is that you know in certain application when you have a huge infrastructure and huge applications in those scenarios you know it can be a really time taking scenario to fix the vulnerability by directly going into the code right 
so for those kind of scenarios we have second way through which we can prevent these kind of attack by implementing a web application firewall so let's try to go ahead and see that how we can implement a web application firewall that can help us in mitigating cross site scripting attacks okay so let's try to understand very quickly that what is a web application firewall okay so normally when you try to send a request to a normal server which doesn't have a waf or a web application firewall this is you know roughly what happens so a user for example me or you you know trying to send a request to let's say google.com so you send a request to the firewall and the server is going to process your request and then it's going to send the response back to you so for example let's say we are using firefox to access google.com so we'll send a request to you know google server google server is going to process that and send send us the response and we'll be able to view it back using the firefox browser right now what happens when we use a web application firewall let me just show you this okay so this is exactly what happens when we try to access an application which is behind a web application firewall so instead of directly sending the request to the web application server we are sending the request to the firewall first okay the firewall is going to analyze and process your request and at this point at this stage when the request has been sent to the firewall is going to inspect whether there is something malicious or harmful present inside your request or not if not then it's going to forward the request to the web application again the web application is going to send the response back to the firewall and then the firewall will send to the destination for example user 1 or user 2 okay so this is roughly what happens so even though if we have misconfigured web application server present in which the application is vulnerable to xss you will still be safe because the firewall is going to detect that before the request even hit to your server okay and then it's going to block the request immediately so that's how web application firewall basically works it act, acts as a reverse proxy you can say which help us to you know prevent the attack before the attack even hit our server right and now let's try to go ahead and see that how we can actually you know use a web application firewall into our misconfigured or vulnerable cross site scripting environment and prevent xss vulnerability okay so for this particular demonstration we are going to use safe line web application firewall which are also happen to be the sponsor for this particular video so basically it's a web application firewall that helps application to be protected from variety of vulnerabilities not only just cross site scripting for example it can prevent sql injection xss code injection command injection you know crlf injection csrf injections and a lot of other you know vulnerabilities right again it acts in the similar way which i have shown you in the previous you know demonstration where i was talking about how waf works and this prevents a lot of vulnerabilities right not only that but if you remember in the beginning of this particular video i told you that i have a surprise for you and well the surprise is that for the three viewers who are going to watch this particular video they will get the pro license of safe line web application firewall for absolutely free right so i am dropping the three license key in the description so you can go ahead and redeem that and you'll get about 3 months of access to safe line web application firewall without any issues so this is how you're going to use the license key so first thing that you need to do is you need to go to the pro section and then you need to paste the license code for example here i'm going to paste one of these and then simply you just need to click on activate once you'll do that it's going to take some time as you can see it is saying that waiting for permitted and over here you see we have successfully got the pro access now for this particular demonstration i have the access for about 7 days but for you guys you can access it for about 3 months so definitely go ahead and check it out the link for the safe line web application firewall is also given in the description and now let's go ahead and see that how we can use this to prevent attacks okay okay so let's go back to the application and we all know that this particular application is vulnerable to cross site scripting right just to confirm this we can go ahead and type script alert one uh, script at close very quickly and see we are successfully getting alert one and all of this are getting rendered as it is right now this is the actual origin ip address of our server right what we want to do is we want to go to safe line and we want to add an application okay in that application we need to add the domain name uh, you know domain of name of the application where it is hosted the port number and all those things and then we want to add our own reverse proxy address okay i'm not going to go too much depth in, in depth into this because it's going to take a little time but definitely you can check out their documentation and everything has been explained in a very simple way okay and now once we have all of this configured you will get something like this and this is the domain name and this is the port that you should be using 
to you know serve your application to the public users and now let's see what happens if i try to access test.bpractical.tech along with port 8081 okay i'm going to paste it 8081 it's like this you can see we are getting the same application so behind the scene it is doing the exact same thing which i have shown you in the diagram so we send the request to the web application firewall and the firewall redirected or you can say forwarded the request to the actual server and you know server is sending the response back to the firewall and firewall is giving the response back to us right let's go ahead and type admin be practical and we are successfully logged in let's go to the transaction and over here what we can do is we can append the parameter which is transaction tra transaction id right let's say test the value is getting reflected and this time you see when i'll try to add script alert one script tag close you see the access to this application suddenly got forbidden why is that because the server the web application firewall detected this particular payload and identified it as a threat right so this actually this particular request haven't even hit the actual origin server it has been blocked directly from the web application firewall itself so even though if we have a misconfigured application running the firewalls like you know safe uh, safe line can actually help us in you know preventing variety of attacks right the best and the ideal situation is to use the web application firewall along with secure coding practices so that you will be very much secure on the internet right and if you go back to our uh, safe line you'll see that if you go to attacks uh let's see the attacks from here you can see let me just go back to statistics okay you see we have got an attack from here right let's see the attack and you see this is the exact attack that we did right script alert one and script attack close even before that you'll see all kind of attack that is happening okay like you see these are all the xss kind of attack even if you go ahead and try to like do a sql injection payload for example let's say or one equals to one you see it has been blocked again and we'll get the log of it into the attack section let's wait let's see the attack here it's xss okay and should be some somewhere around here let's see let's go to attack yeah i think here it is it is getting processed and you see it has successfully identified the SQL injection attack, right? So this is how you can use a web application firewall to protect your application or, or you know, to mitigate the risk of cross site scripting vulnerability. Now here again, the question rises, does implementing a web application firewall means that we are 100% secure? To be honest, no, right? And the reason is that if you know the origin IP address of your server in that case, you will be able to completely bypass the firewall. Let me show you through the diagram, okay? So let's go down here and let me just show you the XMind, okay? So right now what happening is that we are sending the request to the firewall and the firewall is forwarding the request to the actual IP address. Now, if you somehow know the origin IP address, then in that case, what you can simply do is that instead of sending the request through firewall, you can directly send the request just like this. Oh, sorry, let me just delete this can just directly send the request to the uh, to the uh, web application to the actual server right which will completely bypass the web application firewall for example in this scenario itself we know the actual ip address of this particular server which is this one right and that's why when i'm running script alert when script attack close it is getting rendered because it is not going through the web application firewall so for us or for the developers it is important to you know remove the identity of the origin IP address completely from the internet or not leaking it anywhere through their you know infrastructure and that's how you can protect yourself from cross site scripting attack i hope you guys have understood that how we can mitigate xss and you know what are the different ways through which it can still be bypassed and what can be the proper way to completely protect ourselves from xss and few other vulnerabilities right so if you have any doubts if you have any issues just feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and once again thank you so much for watching this video